Hello, a very warm welcome to Middle East Matters. I'm Sanam Shantier. Coming up on this week's programme, Palestinian residents of the village of Khan al-Ahmar anxiously wait for Israeli bulldozers. European nations, meanwhile, have launched a fierce criticism of the impending demolition. We bring you a report about the divorced women of Egypt and a judicial process that's fought with challenges, this despite a sky-high divorce rate. Also coming up, an interview with Iraqi rapper Ayan Z, who joins us from Dubai to talk about his politically charged song, which depicts the violence committed by the US military in Iraq. All those stories coming up, but first to Khan al-Ahmar, a village of roughly 200 people in the Israeli-occupied West Bank, which is at the risk of being demolished by Israeli bulldozers at any time. This, despite international criticism and fierce resistance from its inhabitants. Our correspondent, Iris Makler, brings us up to speed. They come every day from the four corners of the West Bank. Palestinians here to support the Bedouins of Khan al-Ahmar. After years of legal battles, Israel's Supreme Court has authorized the demolition of this village. I come from south of Nablus. I'm here today in solidarity with my Palestinian brothers. If the Israelis use their military power to demolish it, we'll rebuild it again. We will never give up this place, because if we do, that means we give up our future. The Palestinians are making a stand for this village because of its strategic location. It's the last obstacle stopping Israel joining up two Jewish settlements to create a Jewish belt dividing Jerusalem from the West Bank. Palestinians say this would end their dream of a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. These few tents are what's stopping the two Jewish settlements being expanded and joined together, even though they barely protect the Bedouins from the elements. It's an amusement park. <laughs> We're in the 21st century, but as you can see, we have no shelter. Nowadays, people have reached the moon and soon Mars, and here we are on Earth with no proper roof or floor beneath our feet. Israel's plan to demolish the village has sparked international outrage. The latest visitors to show their support, a delegation of three French senators, with the Consul General of France in Jerusalem. They disagree with the Israeli court ruling that the village was built illegally. Apparently there's illegal land everywhere except where there are Jewish settlements, so that's not true. Israel also has to account for illegal Jewish settlements too. The French delegation leaves, but several dozen locals stay the night. They plan to form a human shield when the Israeli bulldozers arrive to demolish Khan al-Akhmar. Divorce rates in many parts of the Middle East are incredibly high, and uh, this is especially the case in Egypt, where a couple separates every six minutes. Now, the common causes range from domestic violence at the hands of both men and women to financial issues. Several divorced Egyptian women opened up to our reporters about the obstacles that they've faced. Dua lives alone in Cairo with her children. She left her husband after a difficult marriage. But since then, it's become more complicated. In Egypt, divorce is just the beginning of what can become a protracted battle. I lose, like, uh, uh, the place that is supposed in Egypt, the, the, the man that provides the place for the children. Once I was about to, to buy a flat for me and my kids, and the, the, the owner refused because I'm divorced. He don't want a divorced lady, he wants a family. Despite these difficulties, more and more Egyptians are asking for a divorce. In Egypt, every second marriage ends in separation. The primary reasons are a rise in domestic violence and the economic crisis which has destabilized households. Women come to this advocacy group for legal advice. Egyptian law favors men, making it easy for them to divorce their wives. Women, on the other hand, must prove that the divorce is justified. And that's not all. The woman has uh, her custody for her children, but if she wanted to marry, 
you should lose this custody. And this is not fair. So women would have the custody, but they don't have any power over their children. So if she wants to have what we call the educational custody, women have to file a case to apply for schools or withdraw their children from certain schools. But this, is, this right is not granted automatically. In Zaazi, about 100 kilometers northwest of Cairo, Mahassan has emerged as a leading voice for women on the issue of divorce. In this cyber cafe, she set up a web-based radio show. In recent years, her show has grown to be a success, even outside the country. For this divorced woman, it was time to break a social taboo and give these emancipated women a voice. Today, we spoke about society's stigmatization of divorced women, who are considered losers. Well, we're trying to change this attitude, and we are trying to help women cope with society's negative view of them. Egyptian society is changing. Women are more educated than before and are increasingly claiming their rights, especially the right to a fair divorce. We finish this week's programme with Dubai-based rapper INZ, the 33-year-old musician whose real name is Majid, released a song earlier this summer about what has happened to his country of heritage, Iraq, since the US invasion. Now, This Is Iraq is a parody of Childish Gambino's This Is America, and it's had over three and a half million hits on YouTube to date. Let's uh, listen to a clip of that song now. This is Iraq. Look at us blowing up, yeah. nobody showing up, Whoa. nobody owing up. This is Iraq, yeah. Yeah. Hey. 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 Look how they freaking out. <laughs> Take your clothes off, rape. Taking photo, rape. I'm so petty, yeah. Yeah. they don't get it. Hey. Get They're immune. They this is telly, huh. that's the news. Blackout. Blackout. And it's a real pleasure to have you with us on Middle East Matters. Now, of course, throughout history, music has mingled with politics and vice versa. Why did you decide to uh, bring these two worlds together? Oh, well, first off, um, thanks for having me. Um, I've, I've actually been doing music for over 10 years now. So, um, so it's nothing new for me to, to get involved in music. Um, and, and given that it's sort of my platform of choice, if I want to make a statement, educate, raise awareness, talk about a subject that's sort of uh, that I'm passionate about, then definitely music will always be my my platform of choice. I mean, other people might relay their message using the art form that they're most familiar and comfortable with. Uh, for me, it will always be music, and I think it's 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 a useful way of reaching um, you know a wider audience, getting uh, reaching out to the masses, so to speak. Now, of course, different artists have used This Is America as their template to tell what they call their truth. What was behind your decision here? Um, yeah, I think there's been <clears throat> over 20 uh, remakes now. Um, and apart from the funny ones, uh, you know, a lot of them educate and shed light on, on their country, you know. Uh, things that I've, I've, I've seen them all and, you know, I didn't know what was going on in Nigeria or or India, and and I think they're brilliant. You know, the more of these, the better. Um, you know, everyone speaks about the the social and and sort of political issues that that country is facing, and ultimately that's what I wanted to achieve as well, uh, to sort of shed light, and raise awareness, and and speak about something that's close to my heart, and and use a, a platform that's you know that uh, that helped uh, you know that could best best help uh, the song go viral and reach a wider audience. I do want to talk about your lyrics. I won't attempt to rap, but I'll try. I actually won't. <laughs> this is Iraq. Look at us blowing up. Nobody showing up. Nobody owning up. Do you perceive the country as uh, the forgotten war in a way? Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's not a perception. I think it's 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 factual. And and I'll tell you why. Um, it's because. We've, we've forgotten to, to hold anyone accountable or liable for what's happened. I mean, you're talking about over a million people dying as a consequence, you know, di whether directly or indirectly, of the, the US-led invasion. Um, and for a million people to just, or over a million people to, 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 
to be murdered in, in a war that the UN has declared illegal. Um, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that no one's been tried at the ICC, at the International Criminal Court, um, till date. And I don't think that's going to ever happen. But I, I think there's no justice if, you know, if we provide people with immunity um, and others that, you know, so people that get sort of special treatment uh, to others. If you were to sort of uh, change the roles a bit, if the invading countries, let's say, were from the East, and the country they invaded was a Western country, um, I'm sure there'd be uproar, it'd be all over the media, and you know you would have got someone at the International Crim Criminal Court over 10 years ago. So I just don't see why the situation is any different here, and why uh, people are immune to being trialed at a criminal court for what's happened, for, for all the blood that's on their hands. Tell me about the kind of reactions that uh, you've been getting from both Iraqis and Americans to this song, which obviously divulges what you see to be injustices in Iraq. I mean, there's, there's been positive and negative reactions from both ends of the spectrum. I've had Iraqis and Americans uh, thanking me for releasing the video, Iraqis for sort of telling Iraq's story and Americans for shedding light on certain aspects of the war that they weren't familiar with, in particular the Abu Ghraib uh, prison. Um, and then on the other side of the spectrum, you know, you have the, the negative comments. I've, I've, I've had Iraqis who have, uh, you know, insulted me for, for showing the country in such a negative uh, image. Um, and uh, even to the extent of receiving death threats from Americans who weren't happy uh, viewing the the American flag uh, on the floor, uh, you know, wrapped around uh, one of the, their fallen soldiers, uh, which was never supposed to be the intent behind that scene anyway. And I'm afraid that's all we have time for. INZ Iraqi rapper, thank you so much for speaking to us here on Middle East Matters, all the way from Dubai. Now that's it for us this week. Don't forget you can contact us by visiting our Facebook page. That's Middle East Matters France 24, or you can drop us a tweet. Thank you for watching.